we had this tropical storm slash hurricane named Sandy come through the neighborhood, and of course, it knocked out the power. Heck, a gnat can fly into the line and I'll lose power. Well, I'm always bragging or about the fact that as a hand tool woodworker, power outages won't slow me down. The reality is, it gets kind of dark in this shop. It's the middle of the afternoon and in broad daylight outside, and as you can see, it's not exactly ideal working conditions in here. Now, of course, it actually appears darker on camera than it is in reality, but I think I'd have a little trouble seeing some of my layout lines and cutting really tight-fitting joinery in this kind of low light condition. So I figured what better opportunity than to build a little project that will help shed some light in your workshop without the electrical power. I've opened up the garage door to provide a little bit more light in here, but seeing as it's about 40 degrees outside, I don't want to work with it open too long. I'd like to be able to close it and warm things up a little bit in here. So what you need for this uh, candle holder, candle stand is what we'll call it, is a couple of pieces of scrap. I've got some scrap poplar here. Uh, I'm going to be sawing out uh, a piece that's nine inches wide by six inches long and I'll be sawing out some supports to go underneath it. I ran over to the dollar store and I got myself a, a little globe and a, a small pillar candle and I picked up this little 8x10 framed mirror. I got two of them and just popped out the mirror plates from them. So first thing I'm going to do is saw out my base and again it's 9 inches wide by 6 inches long. And since this is scrap material that's already surfaced I'm going to use a panel saw because I've got a half inch thick board here. Just clamp it down to the bench and saw her out. I'm going to take my dimension piece and I'm going to draw 45 degree angles from these corners. The front of this has just been profiled using a uh, uh, raised panel plane. It doesn't have to be profiled, this just happened to be the scrap I have and kind of like the look of the front of it. I'm going to draw a 45 degree angle that starts on the edge approximately a half an inch back from this front edge. And I'll repeat it on the other side. Now on these lines, I want to cut a very shallow kerf. I'm going to use a hold fast to clamp this down. Since I'm sawing at an angle across it, the board's going to want to skew and slide along the hook. about an eighth of an inch deep now. And you want to repeat the same cut on the other side. I used a finer back saw to start these. Now I'm going to come back with my rough crosscut saw and just let the lightly run it over that kerf. And since this rougher cut saw has a wider set, it will widen my kerf.
widen the whole curve just a hair, but it's just enough that I can now slide these two mirrors right into place. And now they come together at a 45 degree angle at the back of the piece. I'm going to take my base piece and bring it up against another piece of scrap and mark the width on my scrap board. Now I'm just going to mark that down the length of the board and then rip this out. Find the center point of this. It's six inches. Square that across and then just cross cut this piece. Now we have the side supports for our candle stand and I want to cut some kind of decorative shape on the edge here. Come back about an inch from the back edge here. Start at about an inch there and we'll start an inch down from the top and then measure that distance. It's about six and a half inches so we'll mark the midpoint along this line at three and a quarter inches. And I'm just going to kind of locking my hand in place and pivoting back and forth. Just kind of sketch that in and then I'll flip directions and sketch the other direction. And I've got a nice OG curve formed. Let me go ahead and saw this out now. Now that you've got this curve refined, take your other piece, line it up along the flat edges, and just trace it out, saw it out, and smooth it to final shape again. I want to set my gauge to the thickness of the side supports, mark lines across the edges of the board, and I'll grab my rabbit plane. I'll just take a couple of passes. I'm not interested in sinking a really deep rabbit here. This is more for registration. So now this side support will drop in there firmly and it registers in place so that I can nail it in from the top down. Flip this around and repeat it on the other side. R 
Ride this rabbit plane right in that knife line. And I can use my fingers as a fence on the side. Just until I get a shoulder established there. And I'll sink it the rest of the way. Channeling your inner square here so that the vertical wall is nice and square. There we go, good rabbit. So now both of these pieces register firmly in place. So I'm going to grab the last bit of my stock and want to put a backer board here, but I'm going to saw an arc into the back. It's starting to get a little dark around here. So we'll turn on the camera light for a little extra illumination. Okay, so I've got the back just kind of using a hold fast clamped down to the top. Just going to drill a few pilot holes. Then I've got some cut headless nails. To secure the back end, just make sure you are aligning the direction of the wedge of the nail along the grain here. got the top here secured to the back and I've got a firm platform now that I can set my side pieces into and then I can hammer down screw them in from the back and the top just following the exact same method I did for securing the back onto this All right, I drilled a couple of pilot holes through the backer and I've got some self-tapping screws here and a level. Just secure this to my cabinet. I'm going to put it right above my joinery bench here so I can get nice light shed there. And those holes are perfectly suited to hang my coping saw, my fret saw there. Now I'll slide in the mirrors. And I'll 
I'll take my candle and drop it right in there. Obviously it's gotten totally dark outside. I've still got the garage door open, but there's no daylight coming through. Got my mirror slid in place and I bring just this tiny little candle up here and it casts a great deal of light. Now it may not be that apparent on the camera right now, but because it's up higher, because it's reflecting light, I can see everything on my joiner bench really well. And it casts quite a bit of light from on high down onto the bench. I think if I were to duplicate this fixture in maybe three or four more places to have light coming from multiple directions, I'd be in pretty good shape. And it doesn't hurt. That looks kind of cool. And it holds my fret saw underneath it. So, you know, I've seen, I've seen historical evidence of this uh, candle in front of a mirror thing, but I just kind of pulled this out of thin air. Seemed like a great project to do while my power's out. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.